I'm almost there. All that's left is this mountain pass. This time I'm going to be pretty high up in the Engadin. That's a valley in the Swiss Alps and it's my very first time. Winter always arrives a little earlier in the year here. The mountains in the Engadin are already covered with snow. The lakes, located about 1800 meters above sea level, have not yet frozen over. My destination is St. Moritz, a place that stands for winter tourism like no other. It's pretty cold up here in the Engadin and in order to warm up every now and then, I have planned some activities. All variations of winter sports, on the slopes, on the cross-country ski run and on a bike. I also want to find out how and why tourists have discovered the Engadin in Switzerland. St. Moritz used to be a simple farming village, but today you see massive hotels and shop windows with luxury items. It is still pretty quiet before the destination's peak season. Tour guide Susi Wieprechtiger explains to me that winter tourism was the result of a bet between the hotel owner Johannes Badrut and a group of four summer travelers from England. He made a bet with the English guests. He said, come to St. Moritz in the winter, and if you don't like it, I'll pay for your trip from London to St. Moritz and back. And if you like it, you can stay at my hotel for free as long as you like. Needless to say, he won the bet and as a result, St. Moritz became a popular travel destination in wintertime too. Five luxury hotels are spread across the Alpine resort, which is home to about 5,000 residents. By the way, there is also a leaning tower in St. Moritz. The remnant of the St. Mauritius church stands on an unstable slope and has to be secured again and again. St. Moritz consists of two districts. An escalator takes you comfortably from St. Moritz Dorf, or village, down to St. Moritz Bad, or spa. On the walls you can see photos with motifs from winter sports history. International competitions take place in the Swiss mountain town regularly. Even the St. Moritz Lake is used in winter for a rather unusual event, a polo tournament. And this lake is guaranteed to be frozen over every year so that horses can walk on it? Yes. In December, we need about a week of minus 30 degree temperatures every night, ideally without any wind, and then it freezes over nicely. It'll be covered in about a half meter to one meter of snow. The ice isn't too slippery since there's snow on top. So far it's always been cold enough, like today it's quite brisk. <laughs> Your eyes are tearing up from the cold. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today. My pleasure. Come back anytime. Well, I noticed St. Moritz is a pretty cold place in winter, so exercise is required. And right now I'm going cross-country skiing. First, I'm going to take your poles away, so we can start off together. Here in Switzerland, we say that everyone always has a chocolate foot, one that's a bit better than the other. Which is yours? I'd say the right one. The right one. Then we'll put on your left ski. Okay. Now you're more or less fully attached. The heel remains free in cross-country skiing. <laughs> Be careful with the extended leg. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right side, bend your knee and ankle, and then let yourself fall forwards like a board onto the left ski. First step is the hardest. <laughs> Mm. 
<laughs> Again, bend down on the right, look ahead, and let yourself fall forward. Very good. Now I'll give you these two rings to hold, and you'll keep looking ahead. When the left ski moves forward, the right hand comes up. Take really small steps at first. Lift, lift. I don't understand why this is so difficult. All I have to do is stay in my lane. Good job. This must look totally stupid. Very nice. After I finally get going, I can't help but challenge Heinz. How about a little race? Yeah, yeah, I can't. <laughs> the trail also serves as a training route for young athletes. This is so exhausting. I'm sweating so much that my clothes are soaked. But once you get the hang of it, it's a ton of fun gliding over the snow, especially with a backdrop like this. Soon I'll hit the downhill slopes, but first it's time for a break. And some refreshments. The Engadine is also renowned for its sweet treats. The master confectioners from the Engadine have made a name for themselves as far as Venice. I try a piece of the famous Engadin nut cake. It's made out of short crust pastry and filled with roughly chopped caramelized walnuts. It's tasty and the perfect way to refuel. Now I'm ready to get moving again. Diavolezza is the name of a ski area near St. Moritz. What a view, man, Linus, your mountains. That's them. We're going to an altitude of almost 3,000 meters. And because I don't have a lot of experience, Linus, my ski instructor, should help me on the slopes. I want to take it slow at first. The snow plow technique? Well, check. And up again. Linus's technique looks a bit more elegant.
Look at that, perfect. Where's the applause, Linus? Here it comes. But when it gets a little steeper, I have to put in a lot of effort. And I'm glad when I make it down safely. So Linus, what do you say? What grade would you give me for today? For today I'd give you a B. You did very well and that was a tough start. Really. Thank you. You are a benevolent teacher. Until next time. Yes, till next time. I found this exhausting, while the others make it look so easy. To me, as a beginner, fear and fun is pretty close to each other, but this is what makes it challenging. Anyway, I won't be the king of the slopes today. You can not only go skiing here, you also have a great view. This is Santiago. He's originally from Patagonia, but has lived and worked in St. Moritz for many years as a ski instructor and mountain bike guide. I go on a tour with him, followed by fondue. This is my final activity on my trip to the Engadine, and also a great way to experience the natural landscape. First stop, Zatza Lake. It's even frozen over. What's special about the Engadine for you personally? Hard to say, but everything. <laughs> everything. The nature, the gastronomy is great. So is the ambience. Coming to Engadin is like entering another world. And the cold doesn't bother you at all? No. Are you cold? <laughs> no, no, I'm warm. Shall we continue? <laughs> the highlight of the tour is cycling through the dark. And, of course, the reward that awaits us. More one right there. <laughs> Almost. The, the fondue, fondue is calling. <laughs> Santiago, how does it work? How? Put a few pieces of bread on your plate. Stab one with your fork. Yeah. I've just dunk it. Bon appetit. Ready for the next one. If you lose your bread, you have to do the washing up. Okay. <laughs> so? Okay. 
if you really want to get moving in winter, the Engadin is the perfect travel destination for you. But there's not only winter sports action here, there's also something that's increasingly difficult to find today. Peace and remoteness. Bye bye, see you next time.